So I got a couple of requests and questions from the viewers to warrant the creation of another volume of troubleshooting beginner problems in ZBrush. If you haven't seen the previous volumes, I recommend you do so. The link to that will be in the description. So before I begin, let me give you a quick overview of the different topics I'm going to be covering in this video. So first we'll take a look at some problems you may encounter with respect to navigation. Then I'll give you a quick rundown of Lazy Mouse as there seem to be some confusion. We'll then take a look at the different ways in which we can set up reference. And finally, we'll go over some miscellaneous problems you may run into while using the program. Alright, so when you're sculpting, you can sometimes get yourself into a little bit of a pickle. So you may end up zooming in all the way like so, and you're not going to be able to navigate properly. And in order to remedy this, all you have to do is use the outer bounds here. So using this outer bound here, you can rotate your model and you can zoom back out. So whenever you're up and close with your model, all you have to do is use these outer bounds here in order to rotate and zoom and do all your navigation functions. Another solution for this is to just hit the F key on your keyboard and that's going to frame your model. And that's how you remedy that problem if you ever encounter it. Now, another problem you may encounter is if you accidentally, while sculpting, enable one of these buttons here. What this is going to do is it's going to rotate your model on one axis. And so if you ever find that your rotation is acting funny, uh, the reason for that is probably because you've checked to rotate on Z or rotate on Y axis. So in order to remedy that, just go ahead and click rotate on all axis and that's going to bring back your regular navigation. All right, so now let's take a look at Lazy Mouse. So I'm just going to come up here to this stroke palette and I'm just going to dock this off to the side. And let's go ahead and open up a default sphere. All right, so now I'm just going to go ahead and expand this Lazy Mouse tab. And you can see that we have Lazy Mouse active by default so i'm just going to go ahead and turn that off so that we can see what this does to our brush so if i were to sculpt on the surface here you see that we have this effect that is similar to a poor quality ball pen uh, because when you use a poor quality ball pen on paper you can see that the beginning of the stroke and the end of the stroke has this sort of blotting effect and we get that kind of effect in 3D here. So the end and the beginning of that stroke is extremely intense. And then the intensity sort of dies off in the middle. And so we get this very inconsistent sort of stroke when Lazy Mouse is deactivated. So if I were to go ahead and turn Lazy Mouse on as well as relative here, and now draw on the surface, you can see that we get this nice consistent stroke. And that's not all Lazy Mouse does. It also delays the effect of your brush stroke. So it's not visible at the moment, but what, what's happening here is that your the stroke is sort of lagging a little bit and it's being pulled by a string. At the moment, you can't see it. But if I were to go ahead and increase the Lazy Smooth here, you'll start to notice that string that is sort of dragging the stroke. And you can see that there's a little bit of a delay between my brush and the stroke being drawn. So if I were to increase the lazy smooth here, I'm just going to bump that up all the way here. And you can see that we have this little string that is dragging the stroke. Now, this is going to give you a lot of control. So if you're doing any kind of carving or ornamental designs, this feature is going to be real handy. So let's take a look at some of the other options here. So we also have lazy step. Now, if I increase lazy step, it's going to do something like so. Let's just bring that down a little bit. It's going to do something like so. Now, if you've used Photoshop in the past, you'll know that this is very similar to spacing. So what this basically does is it creates some spacing between the stroke that you have here. And so this is very, very similar to spacing in Photoshop and it kind of gives you the same effect here. 
So the next thing is lazy radius. Now what this does is it increases the length of that string I was just talking about. So if I were to now draw, you can see that, let's just set that lazy step back down here. Let's make sure we have a smooth stroke. All right, so with the lazy radius, what we can do is increase the length of that stroke. So we increase the delay between the brush and the stroke being drawn. So this just gives you extra control over your brush stroke. And the final thing I want to touch upon here is backtrack. So I'm just going to go ahead and select backtrack and I'm also going to enable snap to track and I'll just select the line. So now if I were to draw on top of the surface, it's going to give us something that looks like this. And what this basically does is constrain your stroke to that particular line. So if we have plane here, it's going to constrain it to the plane. If we have line, it's going to constrain it to the line and so on. So let me show you again. So if I draw over the surface, it's, if I just move my stroke away, it's, it's not going to draw anywhere else. It's just going to have a constraint to that line that I drew there. So it's only going to be in effect on that predefined line. And so you can use path, spline, and plane. I would urge you to experiment with all that. All right, so now I'm going to show you how to set up reference. And so I'll show you two ways in which you can set it up. So let's head on over to the texture tab and let's dock that onto the side here. And I'm going to come all the way to the bottom here and you'll see image plane. Just expand that and you should have load image there. So just click on load image. And I'm just going to set this to JPEG and I'll just select an image from my reference folder here. And when I do so, it's going to go ahead and open this image on the layer that we have here. So if I move the sphere here, it's not going to influence the image that we have in the background because it's set on the layer. And there are a couple of things you can do with this. So there's this reference view here, which I can expand. And right now this is gone ahead and save this as our front view. So there are other views as well that you can add images to. Now, one thing you need to make sure you do is to store your view. Otherwise, you're going to lose this image after setting it up. So once you've set it up, just make sure you come here and hit store view. And that's going to go ahead and store your view. Now, you can do a couple of things with this image plane that we have here. So you can reduce the image size and reload that image in again, or you can also um, reduce the opacity of the model that we have here. So those are just a couple of things that we can do. So if I were to set this to back, you can see that the reference head here went from front to back. So as you keep changing this, it's going to change uh, the direction in which the reference head faces. So this is one way you can load up reference. And in order to clear this, all you have to do is hit Control N on the keyboard because it's saved on the layer, and that's how you get rid of it. Um, now, the other way in which you can load up references by opening up the drawing tab here. So I'll just open this up and scroll to the bottom. And you should find this front to back, up or down, and left to right uh, tabs here and just expand this. And this is going to let you load things onto the grid. So in order for this to work, uh, it's going to be grayed out if you don't have the floor selected. So go ahead and select the floor. And this is going to become active as a result. So I'm just going to hit map one and say import. And I'm just going to select this image and say open. Now, here you can see that this is mapped to the grid that we have here. So as you rotate your model, it's going to influence the grid as well, unlike what we had before where it was set onto the layer. So with this, you have a couple of options as well. You can flip your image, you can rotate it like so. And you can also increase or decrease the scale as well as offset it horizontally 
and vertically as well and you can also change the angle if need be let's go ahead and also try to map this to the bottom so i'm just going to select map one and just import this image back in so and you can see that you can just map this to the grid and this is another way you can go about setting up reference and it's as easy as that so now let's move on to the last one all right so this first part i think i've already covered in a previous video but if you've got duplicates hanging around in your viewport like so the way you can clear this up is by hitting Control n on your keyboard and that's going to clear the layer now occasionally you're going to run into a problem where you may have duplicates in your viewport but you're not able to get rid of it by hitting Control n and the reason for this is because you may have unknowingly created a new layer and when you do so what ends up happening is if you hit Control n it's not at all going to get rid of these extra heads that are hanging around here so in order to deal with this problem all you have to do is identify the duplicate layer and then go ahead and delete it in the layer submenu so it's going to ask you if you want to delete a layer because it's an undoable operation just go ahead and say yes redraw your model and hit t on the keyboard to go back into edit mode and then hit Control n and you're back to normal and you can go back to sculpting so that's it for this video for those of you that are new to the channel i'd greatly appreciate it if you subscribed and if you'd like to support the creation of content on this channel you can do so by purchasing my tutorials and resources from my gumroad store or by pledging a few dollars a month on patreon the link to which is in the description of this video and with that i'd like to thank you for watching and i'll talk to you in the next one